Welcome to the program. This morning we'll talk about what's happening on the stock market and the global economy. We'll look at Blackmores and Link. They've got some news and we'll give you some final tips for the end of financial year. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And we're mad, mad about, about money. money. Morning, Paul. Morning, Marty. So, um, market's pretty uninspiring at the moment, you know, really um, not sort of moving very much. Um, yeah, down last week, up five points on Monday, down four, five points excited, yesterday. It, hard to get excited, it looks like a bit of a, a wobbly start this morning ahead of uh, with the news out of the US. Look, I, I think you've got to be a little bit careful. This 30th pre-week before 30th of June, we've got lots of different factors at play. Obviously, we've got book squaring from some of the super funds and the big fund managers. We're tax loss selling. A bit of tax loss selling from some personal investors. Money coming in from the super changes, uh, a bit of company confession season with a few companies sort of warning about profits. So we've had QBE, mm. Certex come out with an announcement this morning, which is not a warning, but you know things aren't perhaps going as well as they could. Unless something happens globally, though, it's really earnings season that we're waiting for now. Yeah, isn't I it? think to, it's really to get earning, movements. earnings season uh, in in August to get some movement, or unless this whole last few weeks has been a bit of a you know against trend, we're going to see suddenly something in July. My suspicion is we've been on hold. Markets more likely to drift down in this environment unless we get really positive stimulus out of the US and or we see some really uh, good earnings figures coming in August. Uh, company news, uh, Blackmore's yesterday. Uh, yeah, Christine got, off to Australia Christine Post. Off Australia Post. Got sold off a bit. There was, I think there was a bit of disappointment that uh, the way in which it, it was handled. Uh, but from all reports, there are some good internal candidates in there. But it's a bit strange, Marcus Blackmore jumping back in to, to, to yeah. drive the, the, yeah, the ship. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of Blackmore's, some of the technicians say Blackmore's has broken through sort of a lot of its key levels, uh, you know, because... It's had a good run. It's had a good run. I mean, um, she's done a terrific job, but a lot in of Nine people, years in the seat. Nine years a lot of people thought the, around the hundred dollar level would, would hold it and uh, now we're back in the, the 90s and below so mm. uh, yeah I mean I, I don't have a strong view about Black Do you think Wars, they manage that that transition well and do you think boards need to be better in sort of how and how they do that piece? I think it's always difficult with a government appointment because the government's going to come out and uh, yeah. you know and it's time to go time to go but they actually told the market before the government announced but they had to tell the market something I don't know I mean I don't uh, I think they would have been better trying to link de-link the two, but who knows? Yeah, uh, and link market services, uh, a big acquisition yeah, offshore. Sort of any, a, any risk there? Oh, huge risk. UK for some reason. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're not good in the UK. More than our Australian companies, are we? companies have a horrific record in the UK, uh, and it's really hard to point to too many success stories. One of you know, you look at AMP back in the the nineties with Pearl and Shirts. Careful what you say, because John's probably watching this. <laughs> yeah, he is. Look, <laughs> look, and look, Link has got a really good acquisition track record. I mean, it's a business. Yeah. largely built on acquisitions. So I'm not sort of poo-pooing the acquisition per se, but I think it's a big punt. Mm. It's also a bit of- How else do they grow? Well, they don't do I mean, that. The, the growth in Australia was, was largely gonna be around in the back of superannuation and really trying to dominate the administration market uh, and really grow that. Now this in some ways is a bit of back to the <coughs> future. This is more a traditional registry and asset service, asset management business servicing the, the fund managers less on the sort of the superannuation side. So, and, and, and I think the UK will now be about 42% of their earnings. So it's quite a, it's, big. it's a big deal <laughs> to link. Uh, market sort of, I say, give them the tick and say, yes, we understand what you're doing. I think the issue is it's gonna be watching them very carefully over some years to see how it, how it takes it out. So mm. look, we won't know how, whether this is a good or bad deal for, for a couple of years, I guess, mm. to see how the uh, ex execution of the, uh, goes but uh, but unfortunately you know they're up against the odds the odds say Australian companies and the UK have not done well and I think the market's going to take a, a long way before it gives them time to sort of give them the big tick on the deal. Another company I'll just get your view on quickly I interviewed um, Chris Kelleher mm -hmm. CEO of IWF yep. on the show last night pretty impressive track record last five years you know up about 72 percent you know 20 yep. percent in the last month with the banks moving out of wealth management do you think IOFs can um, well place for, for, for more growth? Look, it probably is. It's done a lot. It has taken a lot of financial planners and got a, bought a lot of businesses there. I mean, uh, as you and I know, Marty, it's a hard business. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'd be a bit nervous about it. But you're right, IRWF, the banks have got out. They're, in a, they're I suppose, the independent, the new, I won't say the fifth pillar, because AMP is probably that, but sort of the sixth pillar in, in that system in terms mm. of big corporates uh, now involved in, in financial planning and, and financial advice. They have obviously a lot of other businesses. Yeah, as, funds as you management. Know, and funds management and other things. But uh, look, yeah, I mean, look, good, good luck to them so far. I think good, good yield too, Good 6%. yield. Um, 
I just think the industry, is, it's a challenging industry, so I'm just not sure whether I'd be putting a lot of capital into it, but... Uh, watch carefully. Uh, watch carefully. Final tips before we go, we don't have much time. Oh, look, End the of most, financial most year. most important thing is don't leave it till Friday to make your super contributions, right? The money has to be in, the, in your fund if you're on an SMSF. By Friday. By Friday, or yeah. if you're in an industry or a retail fund, they've got to bank it. Yeah. So really and today's... BPAY takes at least 24 hours. BPAY takes at least 24 hours, direct debit may take up to a couple of days. Interesting, I had one of the big fund managers on uh, Colonial First Date on the radio last week. They said 22% of contributions missed out on the deadline last year. Mm. Now this is even a bigger change, right? These are the biggest changes in a decade to the super system, so don't leave it till Friday. Do it today. Do it today, I think, is the moral of the story. That's all we've got time for. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And we're mad, mad about, about money. money.